last class uh, we had stopped at uh, turbojet engines with afterburner and uh, water methanol injection. Uh, we disc uh, we understood how these things work, right, and why thrust augmentation is needed. Now let's look at where all are these turbojets currently being applied. Okay. Where do you think they are applied? Any idea? Fighter aircrafts. Fighter aircrafts. Okay, then. No other. Uh, they are not so much in use in fighter aircrafts. Actually, very, very few fighter aircrafts use it. So, they are basically used for cruise missiles and then uh, supersonic transport. And The supersonic transport was uh, the Concorde that was using it okay. and very few military aircrafts use it. Most military aircrafts currently use a low bypass turbofan. We will look at what a low bypass turbofan is and why they use that a little later. Okay. Now, <coughs> uh, we have understood how thrust is developed right in a turbojet and we have disc, uh, we have derived that equation all that we have done. Now what is the Mach number range of a turbojet? What range of speeds can it go up to? Hmm? 2, no. Any idea? Uh, it's it goes up to three sometimes. Okay, Mach number of three, and uh, it can go from zero to Mach number three. Altitude, uh, it's known to go to very high altitudes. Altitude is not a problem. Uh, the Mach number is not not a problem. So we should have stopped here technically, right? it fulfills all our requirements of flying faster and higher. So, why are there other engines? Okay. One of the key things here is that uh, the specific fuel consumption of uh, turbojets is very high and therefore, people started to look at whether there can be an alternative in terms of reduction of SFC. Okay. Now, the next generation of aircraft engines was the turboprop engines. The idea behind a turboprop is very simple. Uh, people had piston engine plus propeller earlier. Now they had a turbojet. Now in a turbojet, the turbine produces sufficient power to just run the compressor. And there is scope for extraction of more work from the fluid, which we would uh, in a turbojet allow to go through the nozzle, so that you get the required thrust. Now what you can also do is not let it go through the nozzle, not let it expand through the nozzle, but take out as much work as you can 
in the turbine itself. Okay. Then you have a lot more of shaft power, which you can use similar to what a piston engine was doing and connect a propeller in front. Okay. That is what is the turbo prop engine. So, if you look at it, if you look at the turbo jet engine as a box, let us say this is the turbo jet engine, then you attach a propeller in front, you get your turbo prop engine. That is the essential idea of a turbo prop engine and if you take a look at this figure here, you will see that this entire thing is a turbo jet engine right? with a centrifugal compressor and you have a turbo jet engine. Now, if you attach a propeller to in front of it, then it becomes a turbo prop engine. The power to drive both the compressor as well as the propeller should come now from the turbine. That is, you should extract sufficient work out of the fluid so that it runs both the compressor and the propeller. Okay. So, that is a turbo prop engine. It is possible in a turbo prop engine to uh, distribute the power obtained from the nozzle and uh, the power obtained from the propeller optimally. Okay. But if all the power is supplied only to the propeller, then it becomes what is known as a turbo shaft engine. All the expansion of hot gases then it becomes a turbo shaft engine turbo shaft engines are used in helicopters right so these are Now, the performance of this turbo prop engine uh, is in between that of a turbo jet and a piston engine plus propeller. Okay. So, it is more more fuel efficient than turbo jets and uh, it can fly at higher altitude and speed compared to a piston engine plus propeller. Typical uh, altitudes at which turbo props can fly are Five to eight kilometers, and speed is 
around seven fifty kilometers per hour. Okay. Yeah. If the engine is same, why should there be a difference of fuel efficiency between the two of the turbine? Okay. Good question. Uh, see, uh, let me look at the thrust equation that we derived in the last class. Now, if you remember our thrust equation. This was our thrust equation. Now, as I said, uh, this portion is larger compared to this portion, this portion is a very small one. Now, if you look at this portion, you can uh, look at it as mass flow rate into velocity differential. If we assume f to be very small compared to 1, f is typically around 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0.3 to 0.1. So, if you assume this then you can rewrite and if you assume that exit pressure is equal to ambient pressure then this goes to 0 and you can rewrite, rewrite your thrust equation as so mass flow rate into velocity differential right between the flight velocity to the exit velocity of the jet fine this is how thrust is obtained now there are two ways of uh, getting the same thrust here. One is if you get the same thrust by increasing this part, right? That is one way. Or you can get to the same thrust by increasing the mass flow rate through the engine. Okay. Now, what is done in a turbojet is that you increase the velocity differential. Right? Ve is much greater than Va and therefore, you get a high thrust. Now, you can get the same thrust by having a smaller V e minus V a, but a larger mass flow rate. In a few classes from now, we will be showing why uh, if V e minus V a is large, you will get a lower efficiency. We have to discuss something known as propulsive efficiency, which we will talk about a little later in the course and then I will be able to show you why if this is large you will get a lower efficiency okay so what is done in a, a turboprop engine is to get to the same thrust you are now pushing through a larger mass flow rate but with a smaller velocity increment remember the velocity increment is something similar to what we discussed in piston engine plus propeller so you have va and ve here and this differential is not large but a la large mass flow rate is passing through the fan and therefore you get the high thrust okay and not through the uh, a large portion of this therefore it becomes more efficient okay but turboprop engines also have a limitation the limitation is they cannot go beyond a forward speed of something around 0.7 mark number although this is more efficient there is a limitation that you cannot go beyond 0.7 mark number now this limitation comes about because of uh, what happens at the fan tip okay now you want it more to be more efficient so you want a larger propeller so that you pass through a larger mass flow rate through it right so if you increase the diameter now you are increasing the diameter 
and the RPM that it rotates at is typically around 2500 RPM, the propeller rotates it. If you are increasing the diameter, then what happens to the speed at the tip, the rotational speed that also increases, right. So, in addition to a forward component, it has two components, one V A and one is U. So, the combination of these two, which is the actual velocity that the blade tip sees might exceed Mach number 1, when the forward speeds are around somewhere around 0.7. Okay. When that happens, uh, there is a shock structure that gets formed at the propeller tip and that reduces the efficiency of the propeller very much and therefore, you will not be able to get the required thrust. Okay. So, therefore, you cannot operate it beyond this forward speed. So, what is done is, you do not want to reduce this diameter because then your mass flow rate through it will be small. So, there is a limitation that you cannot go beyond 0.7 Mach number. Okay. Now, we had taken a look at how the piston engine plus propeller uh, performs. Like uh, if you remember in the previous class, two classes back, I looked at what are all the numbers SFC and other things, right. Uh, if you remember, what is the definition of SFC? We had defined SFC for a turbo jet engine, for a turbo prop engine it is slightly different, it is m dot f per unit power that is produced. Okay. So, the unit will be, what will be the unit? If you have this in watts, what will be the unit? What is watt per second, watt second? Ah. So, either you can leave it as kg per second watt or you can put it as okay so this is the sfc for definition for The essential idea is we want to compare the power that is developed by the engine and not look at what is the final thrust that is delivered. The final thrust that is delivered is a function of the propeller characteristics. So, we would want to take it out and look at what is the uh, SFC without the propeller being involved. Okay. And uh, in the last class, I had defined what is uh, SFC for a uh, turbo jet engine. Okay. Now, in addition, this power is the power generated by the turbine. It is the shaft power. Shaft power. It is not the power generated by the turbine, but it is the power that is available. That is power generated by the turbine minus the power consumed by the compressor, and what is available for doing useful work. Okay. Now, there are also other parameters that we had looked at. Uh, that is power to weight ratio and okay. Now, what does power to weight ratio tell you? it should be higher or lower, what is desirable. If it is higher, then the weight of the engine that you need to carry to deliver the same power will be smaller. Okay. And power to volume is, it tells you what is the size and therefore, a higher value 
would be desirable because it reduces drag. Okay, fine. Now let's look at the comparative stats between a turbo prop engine and a piston engine plus propeller. What I have put together in this table is the ones in the black are piston engine plus propeller and the ones in red are turbo prop. Now notice that for the same power level uh, we can compare 2600 and 2000 nearly the same power level look at the mass of the engine that is required it is a dramatic reduction right and therefore consequently you have the power to weight ratio the power to mass ratio is something like 7.5 for a turbo prop whereas it is around 2 for a piston engine plus propeller. So it makes this uh, uh, power to weight it reduces the weight of the engine dramatically. Now if you look at power to volume right it is a very small number for piston engine plus propeller around 0.3 whereas it is around 6 maximum in the case of turbo prop engines. So it not only reduces the weight of the engine it also reduces the size of the engine. So power to weight and power to volume of uh, turbo prop are much more superior to that of piston engine plus propeller and that is the reason why you would not find piston engine plus propeller operating uh, in a large number of applications these days they are very much restricted to either a unmanned aircraft or uh, two to four seater aircrafts and agricultural aircrafts okay and most of the uh, large passenger applications has been taken over by turbo props okay because the drag is less as well as the weight is much more smaller why does this how does this happen why is it that you are seeing this we go from one to the other and we reduce magic why do you think is this happening What is your reasoning for weight? Why should it be? Uh, the yeah, turbine also is there. Uh, turbine compressor. And also reduction gear was there. there. True. Control part of it is correct. The other part that you are uh, missing is if you remember our equation that we derived for the power of. Uh, the piston engine plus propeller you will uh, discover that it is directly proportional to the rpm right and uh, i told you that if you look at enfield bullet and uh, the current day pulsar and other vehicles you will find that the rpm is higher and therefore the power to weight will be much more right and a very similar thing happens here the rpms of uh, gas turbine engines are much higher than rpms of piston engine plus propeller okay it's typically in the range of 20000 and if you go for a smaller micro turbines it will be in the few lakh rpms go to few lakh rpms very large gas turbines operate at a uh, reasonable rpm of around 10000 so it's much larger than typical ic engine rpms and therefore you find that these two are smaller in addition it is a larger mass flow rate that is going through the engines right and you can add more fuel and therefore you find this advantage being there and as I said because of this phenomenal advantage uh, the IC engine uh, or the piston engine plus propeller lost out and you are only left with turbo props and turbo props have an application in
you have uh, turbo prop engines being used in large military and uh, civilian transport this is mostly restricted to cargo okay large military aircrafts uh, anything comes to mind india recently acquired something from the us from going there what are those aircrafts c130s right uh, they acquired very recently a large uh, i think four number of aircrafts uh, something similar is Antonov, very large aircraft for military transport and uh, civilian cargo transport only because see if you are looking at cargo, uh, it does not matter to cargo that it has to sit for a large number of hours in the plane. But if you are looking at passenger transport because you have this restriction on forward speed of 0.7 the time taken will be much larger for uh, longer uh, haul flights right. So therefore you tend to use turbo prop engine in medium, uh, medium range passenger transport. So you won't find it uh, across continents, but inside countries and inside continents, you will find this uh, uh, for passenger transport, right? Okay. Now the next generation of engines came out of turboprops, primarily to address this limitation. This was the limitation of turbo props. SFC wise, it is very good, but I cannot go beyond 0.7 Mach number. So, we want to have the best of both worlds. Can we do with uh, good SFC as well as go to higher Mach numbers? What was available was only turbojets at that time, which was very high SFC. So, the next generation of uh, engines uh, that came about was what is known as turbo fan engines Now what was the problem with uh, turbo prop engines it was only 0.7 mark number and that restriction was because at the blade tip right. Now if we assume this is this box is the basic turbojet engine right and this was our turbo prop engine. The trouble was that because it is rotating at high rpms and you have a large diameter at the blade tip the Mach number was exceeding 1 when the forward speeds was 0.7. So the idea was why not reduce forward speeds ahead of this fan and uh, a simple way to do it is put a diffuser in front of it right. If you put a diffuser in front of it what happens is 
irrespective of the flight Mach number, you can control what is the flow speed upstream of the uh, propeller or the fan, right. So, that is the essential idea of a turbofan engine. So, you have a part of the flow that is going through the fan and going through the, this is known as the bypass duct and this is known as the core. So, you have one part of the flow that is going through the core and the remaining going through the bypass duct. Okay. And if you look at this figure here, you have what is a turbofan engine. Notice that you have an intake upstream of this and you have fan blades that are mounted on the same shaft as the turbine blades and the low, uh, low pressure compressor and the high pressure compressor stages are mounted on a different shaft that is connected to the high pressure turbine here, right. high pressure turbine here. right? So, the advantage with this kind of an engine it is called two spool engine, because there are two shafts, concentric shafts. The advantage of this two spool engine is you can control the rpm with which you rotate uh, different parts of the compressor. The <coughs> low speed compressor can be operated at a lower rpm and the high speed compressor or the high pressure compressor can be operated at a higher rpm okay. and that is the advantage of this and you have this fan here and there is a nozzle that and the flow goes out through this. Essentially this is something similar to the concept that we discussed earlier that thrust large thrust can be obtained either with an increase in mass flow rate or an increase in velocity differential. What is done here is again a large portion of the mass flow rate goes through the fan and the velocity differential is very small there, right. There is more like a propeller and therefore, the velocity differential is small. So, you get better performance. Typically, the Uh, fan pressure ratios are around 1.4 to 2.2 and with this arrangement uh, you can go up to very high Mach numbers right and still uh, obtain the same with a lower SFC compared to a turbojet engine okay. and which is why turbojets are hardly being used in any um, military aircrafts as well as civilian aircrafts right. Uh, if you look at uh, civilian aircrafts I had said earlier in the class that uh, they mostly use a turbofan engine. This is the reason. Now, you can define a parameter called alpha, which is known as bypass ratio, alpha is equal to air passing through. to the air passing through hole.
4 engine okay so what is alpha for a turbo jet engine plain turbo jet engine there is no bypass duct zero right as i shown here this is the bypass duct a part of the flow passes through the bypass duct part of it flows through the core engine core engine is still the turbo jet engine right if it's only a plain turbo jet there is no flow passing through the bypass duct and therefore alpha is equal to 0 for turbo jet engines now you might ask me why is this that you still insist that velocities are uh, very small velocity differential is very small right a large mass flow rate with a smaller velocity differential is what I said you can have this nozzle also choke the pressure ratios allow you for that and yet I say that this is so the reason is if you look at this flow that is going through the bypass there is no heat addition anywhere right and therefore the temperatures of the gases is lower so <coughs> if it is choked even then we know that right so if the temperatures are lower then the velocities will also be lower a large portion of the flow is going through with a lower velocity a small portion of the flow is going through with a larger velocity overall you still have a very low velocity differential and that is how this produces higher SFC okay and uh, typically alpha for military aircrafts will it be large or small alpha values for military aircraft. Small. Okay, uh, you are right. If you look at any military aircraft, most military aircraft do not have their engines on the wings. Okay, their engines are fitted into the body. They are in the body itself, right? Because you don't want a large drag. Whereas civilian aircrafts, you will hardly find anything engine being fitted to the body. Engine is always outside. Okay, uh, so military aircrafts the engine is fitted into the body and you would like a smaller alpha because that will mean smaller frontal area also okay so typical values are between 0 0.3 to 1 and uh, alpha for civilian aircrafts is around 6 you can use a large alpha here because the engines are no longer fitted onto the body it is outside and the typical Mach numbers that some of these civilian transport aircrafts uh, look at is around 0 0.8 to 0 0.85 they are not very high Mach numbers they do not go beyond the speed of sound okay. So therefore you can look at a large value of alpha in fact G uses even larger value of alpha G engines go for typically G90 engine has a alpha of around 9 which is very large the reason they give for this is that if you look at the drag component of the engine or the nasal drag as it is called and the drag component coming from the main body of the aircraft the drag component coming from the nasal is very very small compared to the main body of the aircraft okay and they say that it is only in the second digit that it matters so you can go in for a larger frontal area here right 
alpha increasing means you are going in for a larger frontal area. But they say if you increase alpha, you are going to increase, you are going to decrease SFC, right. So, therefore, that is the advantage that they are looking at. Although frontal area is increased, drag is increased, they say it is not too much compared to the overall drag, whereas the advantage that you get in terms of SFC is much, much more. So, they go in for this alpha of around 9. So, <coughs> what we need to remember is alpha higher means larger frontal area. and larger drag. same like yeah, we are fitting a simple fan in yeah. front of the turbojet yes. if we remove that fan yeah. and we run that turbojet yeah. is turbo jet has more uh, thrust or turbo fan uh, when we work out uh, some more details i'll be able to show that fan will have uh, much larger thrust for the same uh, if you look at for the same fuel that is consumed same amount of fuel that is consumed uh, the turbo fan will have a larger thrust which is which will uh, which will be obvious in terms of sfc so if you look at the data that uh, i put together here uh, in addition to what we had in turbojets there is another additional parameter alpha coming in here right this is alpha and you see that alpha ranges between uh, 4.9 to 2.4 to even smaller. Smaller ones are for military aircrafts. Okay. There is an additional uh, advantage in a military aircraft. Military aircrafts uh, do not want to use turbo jets because there is a other advantage that you can get with turbo fan, low bypass turbo fan. Any idea what that is? Hmm? No. Because we are using turbo fan. We can uh, that is yes, that is not a lot of it. There is another advantage. That is yeah, that is a byproduct, I would say. More to do with propulsion, let me tell you that. The advantage is look at this. If you in most civilian engines, you do not mix the two streams. Right. Whereas, in a military aircraft, you can mix the two streams and pass it through a same nozzle. Okay. What does that mean? Your additional air that is coming in into the afterburner right? and that additional air you can add additional fuel and burn it. So, the uh, increase in the afterburner thrust that you can get with the afterburner on is much more with a low bypass turbo fan and that is a significant advantage. In a military aircraft, you would want this. You would want a large ratio of thrust when the afterburner is on to when it is not on. So, and therefore, military aircrafts have been tending to use a low bypass ratio turbo fan for this reason also. Okay. Now, coming back to this uh, table here, if you look at all these engines, the top few are military aircrafts and the bottom ones are civilian aircrafts, uh, GE CFM 60, Pratt and Whitney engines okay. and this is the Russian engine. Notice that uh, SFC here is uh, different from the SFC that you saw in terms of in the uh, with regards to turbojet okay. and if you compare SFCs.
fans are typically between 16 to 24 Newton second, whereas uh, it was around 30, 30, what was it? 31 to 36. milligrams for turbo jets. So, there is a difference in SFC, it is almost half the SFC that you get with turbo jets and therefore, it is quite obvious that you see these in civilian aircrafts more. And the other advantage that I talked about for its use in military aircrafts is that you can get a higher afterburner thrust. Okay. But you would also probably notice here the thrust to weight ratio would be lower compared to a turbojet engine, right? And uh, so, also the thrust to volume, it is a larger volume, larger larger frontal area it has. So, the thrust to volume and the thrust to weight are different from the turbojet engine, it is larger than turbojet engine. Okay. And what are the applications of this? Where do you think these are applied? Civilian, civilian transport, and Okay, we will stop here and continue in the next class. In the next class, we will look at what are ramjets and how did they come about and further go into what is cramjet. Okay, thank you.